Hello guys and welcome back to this new video. So today we are going to talk about Christian Barnard. He was, um, he died in 2001 in uh, Pafo, uh, Cyprus. Um, he was one of the greatest surgeons uh, that we remember in history. But um, the words that would describe him better are words written by somebody else for his epitaph, so to place um, on the coffin, uh, on the tomb, and um, they, those words describe him as egocentric, hard worker, intelligent, ambitious, insolent, and arrogant. If you guys think that this is not a compliment, it is not probably. But the idea is that all of that is probably very, very true. Who was Barnard? Christian Barnard. As I said, he was a South African surgeon. Um, he was convinced that uh, everything else that other surgeons could possibly be doing, he was very capable of doing that as well. So he was convinced that he could do everything other surgeons um, could do in other hospitals with other um, equipments, with other tools. So when he found out that a Russian surgeon had uh, implanted a second hand, a second hat on the top of uh, a second hat on a dog, he did the same. Um, his major virtue and vice was hubris, what the ancient Greeks would define as hubris. He was arrogant, insolent, um, he felt like um, he could do everything. Um, but that is also very positive because it is thanks to him that we have the first heart transplant. We are between the nights of the 2nd and 3rd December in 1967 and he transplanted the heart of a woman. Um, this woman came to the hospital and um, she, has, uh, she had had a car crash and she was basically in a sort of coma. Uh, so he thought it would never like uh, uh, she would never recover um, and everybody thought that before him way before him Norman Shenway who was working at Palo Alto Stanford in California would be the first one to uh, perform a heart transplant in reality he um, Shenway was much more um, debated um, was much more uh, concerned with the legal implications of that. Um, legal implications because on the one hand, um, uh, there were um, some technologies that would allow somebody to continue living, uh, for their heartbeat to continue um, pulsing um, and continue its movement, even though that person was at the time um, brain dead. However, um, there was the understanding that uh, that person was not really technically dead. So like nowadays, it is, I believe, the family, the next of kin that decides whether that person has to survive or not, um, has to uh, be kept alive or not. Um, and things like that. But uh, uh, at the time, uh, there wasn't a normative, there wasn't a law that could establish that person is actually dead. That was considered only if the heartbeat uh, stopped for so long that there was no chance that that person could recover. And um, there were those cases though where people were in coma. Um, brain dead and surgeons kind of suspected or knew that there was no chance for them to recover but they weren't technically considered dead. Not until the first heart transplant was executed um, and carried out by uh, Christian Barnard. He took the heart of a woman, technically speaking living, because the heartbeat was functioning and put it into this man. Um, this man was um, Wojcicki 
and he died 18 days after. But five hours after the um, surgery, which was, by the way, much more easy than technically to gain on genetic defects of the heart. Um, five hours later, Bernard called up his boss, his chief, and said, look, I did that, and the result was amazing. The person is still living. A uh, second um, uh, patient that he um, operated was Philippe Bybuck. And he was 59, lived for a year and a half. Um, there were some pictures that were published, um, but uh, there are a lot of uh, qualms, a lot of, uh, um, uh, con there's a lot of controversy um, about, there's a, but there's a lot of controversy on those pictures because basically um, some people reported later that uh, Baipuka uh, wasn't really himself. He had to be sustained by other people to take that picture. Anyway, um, this man lived, he was 59 and lived for a year and a half. So definitely heart transplant was a thing. And then in, in 1968, so we are like a few months after the first heart transplant, um, Harvard intervened and kind of like technically established that uh, the death of somebody is not just the torment uh, when their heartbeat uh, stops, but also when you don't have uh, cerebral activity. Um, and so that person can be considered technically uh, dead. Now, um, at the time, uh, there was no cyclosporin, uh, which was only um, in, on the market in 1971, and that prevents uh, the person from rejecting uh, the new organ, most of the times so I should say. Um, anyway, uh, Christian Bernard never was accused of homicide, his charisma um, we could say prevented that from happening. Um, he stopped operating because of his arthritis. He stopped operating and dedicated himself to um, his own life, to enjoying life. And so he had a total of three wives, very beautiful women. The second wife was extremely beautiful. The third wife was like 50 years younger than he was and died uh, due to asthma. Uh, in the 2001, but it's important to remember that the arrogance, the insolence, uh, the belief that he could do everything led us to have a heart transplant, which saves every year millions of lives. So I thought it was important to dedicate at least one episode to him. Um, and um, that's it, guys. Um, I hope you have seriously enjoyed this video. Um, so if you have, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification below, um, and also, of course, comment and let us know your thoughts. Um, especially if any uh, of you watching this video wants to become a surgeon. So guys, that's it. We'll talk some more next time. Bye!